All right, so let's discuss how to find a rotational volume using the shell method. And we're going to find a rotational volume for this particular function here. And suppose that this line is defined as y equals 2x squared minus x cubed. And suppose we want to find the volume that results if we sort of rotate this line here and the area underneath it. And we're just going to kind of rotate it around the y-axis. So we sort of get a bunt cake type shape. And this would have kind of a hole in it, so let's try the washer method that was introduced in a previous video and see if that works out for us. So to do the washer method, we take our outer disk, we subtract an inner disk, and we get this washer shown here. And this is just um, one washer. We'd stack up a bunch of these to get our whole volume here. We'd add the volume in each of these washers, and that would give us the volume of our bunt cake. And notice if that if we did this, we'd be integrating with respect to y, because we're going to be going up. Our thickness is going to be a dy, and we're going to be going stacking these in the upward direction. So we'd integrate with respect to y in this case. But in order to execute this method, we have to determine our um, radius for our outer and our inner shells. So this would be an example of what our, our inner would look like for this particular y value right here. And our, our outer would be this distance here. But you notice if I'm trying to find our inner and our outer, they're both actually on the same line for the same y value. So one a given y value um, would yield two different x values for my inner and outer radius. And that's kind of complicated. So um, rather than trying to force the wa washer method here, the path of least resistance is going to be implementing the shell method instead. It's going to be a lot easier. All right, so clearing some of this out. Basically what we're doing with our shell method is we're trying to find the total volume of our bunt cake structure by by summing up the volume of a bunch of shells. So instead of disks, we'll use shells. But what is a shell? So here's our bunt cake again. And imagine we had a, sh a shell would look kind of like this. It's like it's sort of like a, a big cylinder, but it's hollow. So what we'd be doing is starting with a shell at x equals 0. You can see the height of these shells is steadily getting higher and higher until we get to sort of this um, top point here. Then the height of the shells will get less and less until we finally get to x equals 2 on the end here. And if we add up all those shells in between, that will give us the total volume of our bunt cake. So that's sort of the general process that we're going to do here. And um, it's also noteworthy that we're going to be integrating with respect to x now because um, previously with the washer, we'd integrated with respect to y, and we'd kind of gone stacked up this way. But now we're, we're adding them across in the x direction. As our x is getting bigger and bigger, we're just adding up all these shells. So that's sort of an added bonus for using the shell method in this case because integrating with respect to x is typically uh, more intuitive than... Um, integrating with respect to y. But the tricky part comes with finding the volume of a shell. It's a little bit more complicated than finding the volume of a disk. So let's um, take a look at what, what one of these shells looks like. So this would be an example of a shell here where before we find the volume of it, let's just look at a couple parameters here. So it's going to have a height of h shown here. And we get wanted to find the radius of our shell. So we'll just call that R. And lastly, we're going to want to define the thickness of, the, of our shell, which um, we'll call that delta X, because that's in, going to be in the X direction here. Now, finding the volume of this is, is, um, is um, the trickiest part of the shell method. So imagine that we sort of cut this open. We're going to do some surgery on our shell here. So we break out the scissors, and we're going to cut along this dashed line here. So imagine if we did that, and then we kind of peeled back our shell kind of open it up this way and this way. We end up with something like this, where we're, we're peeling it back. And if we go ahead and just peel that back further and just sort of roll this thing out, we get something that looked like this, where we've sort of um, rolled it all the way out and flattened it. Now, at this point, this becomes a little bit easier to take the volume of. So we're trying to find the volume of these shells that we're going to add up. So let's just look at this one here. and. First of all, there's going to be three dimensions, right? So first, let's look at the height of this shell. Our height, um, we're just going to call that h. So that's going to be one dimension here. 
and we'll call that h. And as you can see here, for a given x value, that h is going to be equal to the value of our function. So we can actually just replace that h with our function in this case. So getting more specific, that h becomes 2x squared minus x cubed. Next, let's take a look at this thickness of our shell here. That is the same thickness we have over here, this delta x. And graphically on our rolled out shell, you can see that's going to be our thickness here, delta x. So we can go ahead and plug that into our equation for the volume of a single shell. It just kind of stays as delta x. And lastly, and um, probably the most complicated part is we're just, we got to find the circumference of our shell. So um, given this is our radius, our circumference is going to be that value if we go all the way around this circle here. So um, defining that on our rolled out shell, that's just going to be 2 pi r. That's our circumference, right? 2 pi times the ra our radius. So we can fill that in for our circumference. And specifically, remember we're integrating with respect to x. x is increasing as we integrate. And that radius here is just going to be our x value. So we can go ahead and plug in our x for this radius up here. So it's just 2 pi x. So now we found all three dimensions of our shell here and we can multiply those together and that gives us the volume of a single shell. So we can take all this and just go ahead and plug that in up here for the volume of a shell. So and if we want the exact volume we're going to take the limit as that n goes to infinity so we'll have an infinite number of infinitesimally thin shells and plugging that in we get this as our infinite summation equation where you see we've used these x sub i's because we have it in summation notation going from i to n. And this is our infinite sum for the volume of this bunt cake we were trying to find using the shell method. Now from here we can easily translate this infinite sum into an integral based on the definition of the integral. So let's clear some of this out here and go ahead and evaluate. So this is our infinite sum. We translate that so you notice our delta x just became our dx, and all of our x sub i terms just became x terms because now we're operating on a continuum of x values. Still in somewhat of a question here is what our limits would be, but you recall we're integrating from x equals 0 to 2. That's kind of where we moved, and let's go ahead and watch that TEC again just to recall how we're integrating. So as you recall from this video, we're starting off with our shells at x equals 0, and then we're moving out all the way out to the end of our line where it intersects the x-axis which is at x equals 2. So in doing that process we're integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 2 so we can put our limits in. So now all we really have to do is go ahead and evaluate this. But before we do it's worth um, just mentioning what our general equation this is specifically for this function here but, but more generally the um, formula that we use for the shell method is given as the integral from a to b of 2 pi r times our height times dx. And of course recall that 2 pi r was our circumference, h was our height, and dx was the thickness of a given shell. But um, back to our integral here, we can go ahead and evaluate this now. So we can take this 2 pi and bring it outside of our integral to simplify things a bit. We can go ahead and distribute this x into both of these terms and we get this somewhat simplified integral and now we can just take the antiderivative of our two terms here which um, we're just using the inverse power rule here so that um, we can that 2 pi comes out front that 2x cubed becomes 2 over 4 x to the fourth and that x to the fourth becomes 1 fifth x to the fifth and now using the fundamental thermal calculus part 2 we just plug in this upper limit for our x and then subtract the value when we plug in this 0 for our x. And doing that, we get the 2 pi out front. We just plug in our 2. Our 0 term just goes to 0. And running through these calculations here, we just end up with 3.2 pi. So that is how you find the volume of a bunt cake using the shell method.